Hey, New Day family and guests, thank you for joining us online today. Church family, please remember to bring in candy to support the New Day Trunk or Treat event that will be taking place on October 31st. Parking attendant help is still needed. If you're interested in that, please see Brother Don Lucy or Pastor John for more information. The Shabak Youth Conference is right around the corner. That will be on March 5th through the 7th in 2021 in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. Registration for adults must be paid by November 1st. And for more information, please see Brother Michael Lucy or Sister Desiree Lucy. The youth is selling Mrs. Pumpkin items that include baked spaghetti, cream cheese brownies, and chicken pie. There are even some vegetarian options. And please, if you're interested, find a youth member or contact Brother Michael or Sister Desiree. We do still have some New Day Cross decals. The cost of the decals is $10. And if you would like to purchase one, please contact Sister Pam Anders. As a reminder, we will not have a Sunday evening service tonight. Please remember to keep our church family in your prayers. This Wednesday, however, October 28th, please make plans to join us at the New Day building for a special prayer service as our country prepares for the upcoming presidential election. Thank you again and enjoy the service. Good morning, New Day family. Uh, we're excited to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Uh, we wish it was different circumstances, but at this time, uh, we are where we are. And I just want to start off by saying this. Uh, we are experimenting this morning with a new, some new audio video things. We're excited about the capabilities that it brings up for us. So please, please, please uh, enjoy this morning. Uh, and I just got to say as we move into this service that uh, we appreciate everything that was said and done a couple weeks ago. We didn't get a chance to share that with you this past week because we were out of town. But we do love and we appreciate each and every one of you in the New Day family. Uh, you guys are amazing. And we are so very thankful that God is allowing us to be a small part of what he's doing right here at New Day. Now today, we're planning on being, all of us being here this morning to worship together. But due to some unforeseen circumstances, uh, we're not able to do that. Most of you, if not all of you, have already seen on our Facebook page uh, that explain that some of our New Day family have been exposed to COVID-19. Uh, we're praying for those that were affected by this, and we believe God for a quick recovery. So, we did clean and we did sanitize the building completely from top to bottom. And we also made the difficult decision to not have any in-person services or events this week. We do believe, please understand this, we do believe in God's healing and God's protection. But we also believe that God has given us wisdom and he expects us to use the wisdom that he's given us. Now, the plan is for us to be back in the house this Wednesday night for a very special prayer service. Our country church is about to be having one of, if not the most important elections in our history. And we believe that as a body, as a group of like-minded believers, that we need to come together and pray. So make plans now to come out and be a part of this special service because we're going to be talking about uh, prayer and we're going to be praying for our church, for our families, our church family, our relationships, and we're going to be praying for our country and what our country is about to be going through. So there's also going to be a time for special prayer. So we invite you to come out and be a part of this special service and a special time of prayer on Wednesday, October the 28th at 7 p.m. So today, church, we're going to be in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 10. I'm going to give you a chance to scroll, to uh, punch it in, um, whatever the case may be. Maybe you're flipping some pages. That's all right. I told my wife most of you can remember back at the corona quarantine stuff we did. 
that whenever we're doing this, I enjoy interacting with everybody. So let me give a big hearty what's up to everybody that's online. If I miss you, when I call your name, I apologize. But I got about 50 million things going on up here. So uh, what's up, Dez? I see Jim. I saw Kathleen earlier. Uh, uh, Stephanie. I saw Stephanie on earlier. There's my wife. Uh, <laughs> hey, honey. Uh, I see uh, Sister Diane. Uh, good to see you guys this morning. Wish we were back in the house. But uh, we are praying that you are safe and sane. <laughs> because we know it's tough to be at home and not in the house of the Lord. But we do believe that right now this is the smart thing to do. Faith without works is dead. And if all goes well, we're going to be back together in the house on Wednesday. And like I say, church... Um, everybody, uh, <laughs> everybody who wants to be with us, we want to make sure everybody's in. So we want to give you just a second. But if you're in, let's chat. We got, we're going we're gonna to be chatting back and forth with you. Let's talk. I love crowd participation. I'm a crowd participation kind of preacher. So I need some folks to be talking to me today. If you see me bending over, I got my computer. Don't know if you, yeah, you can see a little bit on the video. So I can sort of glance. But if you see me doing that, I'm trying to figure out what some folks are saying. Because y'all know my eyes. Y'all pray for me. Pray for the, pray for the weak eyes of your brother. Praise the Lord. So, but we do want to thank you for joining us because, quite honestly, church, one of the most important parts of who we are is our hearts. And who you choose to allow to speak into your heart is important. So we want to thank you for allowing us to be a voice that speaks into your life and that speaks to you. And we do pray that you are blessed and that you grow from the word that God's got for us today. Now, honestly, this is different from where I thought we were going to be. And whenever we, whenever we got the information, God immediately, he redirected and said, okay, we're not going to where we were going to go. Now we're going to redirect, and now we're going to go in a different direction. But I'm excited about where God's taking us today. I've said this before, that one of the things that I miss the most about some of the roles that we've been able to have the opportunity to fill in, 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 in times past is that the fact that there are times now where we don't get to spend a whole lot of time actually slowing down and teaching. But what I've learned over the years is that we don't always have to run the aisles. We don't always have to shout the walls down. And we don't always have to dance all over the church to have church. Does that make sense? Are you with me today? Come on, somebody. Get with me here. Good to see you, Brenda. Praise the Lord. We don't want to be just inspirational. We want to be transformational. In other words, and I hope you're already with me. Man, it's been a couple weeks I feel like preaching this morning. We don't want you to just be inspired by the words you hear at New Day. We want your life to be transformed by the words you hear at New Day. I am preaching already, and I hope you're with me. We ain't got to our opening scripture yet. My Lord, I feel like preaching today. Now, we all need to be inspired, but everything does not have to inspire us to transform us. There are times when we need some education and some revelation, and I believe that God has got that for us today. So what I want to talk to you today is a subject I was going to talk about a long time ago before we were able to come back in the house because of government restrictions. I feel like today can be transformational for a lot of us. So today what I want to talk to you about is this subject. Free your mind. Free your mind. In the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 10, the Bible says these words in verse 4. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. You see, I believe God's word shows us exactly how we can free our mind. So we find ourselves today situated in a very popular couple of verses. And I feel like I need to start this off with giving you a quote that I heard. And it goes something like this. You don't change your life by changing your life. I'm going to let that sink in for a minute. You don't change your life by changing your life. You change your life 
by changing your mind. Mm, that's powerful, ain't it? Let me say that again. You don't change your life by changing your life. You change your life by changing your mind. My Lord, that's good stuff. And I believe that the Bible teaches that with this, teaches that quote when it says in Romans chapter 12 and verse 2, do not conform to the pattern of this world. Don't conform to the patterns, the trends, the normals, the socially acceptable. Do not pattern your life after that. Why? Not just because God's way is the right way, but because God's way is the better way. My Lord, I wish I had somebody that would shout with me today because that's good. God's way is the better way. If you want to live healthy, live God's way because it's better. If you want to live a morally good life, live God's way because it's God it's better. If you want to live God, a good life, live God's way because it's a better way. We don't have to do these things, church. We get to do these things. We get to leave, live God's way. We get to live a better way. See, the way that we were talking about that way, the pattern of the world, that trend, that normal, those socially acceptable things are going to lead to destruction. So the Bible says, don't be conformed to the patterns of this world. Do not be conformed to the patterns of this world, but be transformed. How? By the renewing of your mind. My Lord, that's good stuff right there. You see, the thing is this. Please, please, please hear me. If I want to become a new me, then I got to be willing to go back. That's good stuff right there. Because it goes on to say, because then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. You see, the Bible also says in Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5, to let this mind be in you, which was in Christ Jesus. Paul says, watch this. Don't just have the morals of Christ. Mm, but we got to go after the mind of Christ. You see, in other words, church, if I'm going to talk like Christ, I got to think like Christ. If I'm going to act like Jesus, I need to be able to think like Jesus. If I'm going to be like Jesus, I've got to be able to think like Jesus. My Lord, this is good. And this is important because I believe that this is one of the most overlooked but most important parts of both elevation and transformation. You see, people miss the mind, and the mind is everything. The battle is in the mind. We wage warfare in the mind, and the enemy will attack us in the mind. I've said it before, but it needs to be repeated, church. Because we will always go to the next level head first. Mm. Once your head gets out, everything else will follow. Now, I believe that there's some people who's watching on this live stream right now who's about to be getting extremely excited. I hope you dancing all over your living room. I hope you shouting all over your house. I hope you give me a big old hearty amen right here because you should be getting extremely excited about your future. You should be telling everybody else and yourself, my Lord, I hope you got that. You need to be telling everybody else and yourself that you on your way somewhere. My Lord, not because your life is there yet, but because your mind is there. My Lord, because God is taking you to where you're going head first. <laughs> And if your mind is there, then guess what? Everything else has got to follow. I might not be healed yet, but my mind is there, so my body going to follow. My finances might be in a wreck now, but my mind is there, so my body got to follow. My health might not be where it's at, where it should be, but my mind is there, so my body is going to follow. See, our relationships are going to the next level when our mind goes to the next level. Our focus is going to the next level when our mind goes to the next level. Our commitment will go to the next level when our mind goes to the next level. You see, our dedication will go to the next level when our mind goes to the next level. My Lord, church, we will go to the next level when our mind goes to the next level. We will go, church, head first. Somebody type head first. <coughs> mm, my Lord. So I'm telling you something.
sir. I'm telling you, ma'am. I'm telling men, women, and children, boys and girls of all ages, you do not change your life by changing your life. You change your life by changing your mind. <coughs> but now when I say change your mind, <coughs> what do I mean? What do I mean? Change your mind? From what to what, Brother John? So what do you mean change your mind? Now, I know some of us husbands are thinking, I just asked my wife. She's good at changing her mind. <laughs> guys, don't leave me hanging. Somebody type amen. Come on, guys. Hook me up here. Type amen. Praise the Lord, somebody. <coughs> but do you mean to go from thinking bad things to thinking good things? Do you mean to go from thinking ungodly things to thinking godly things? Negative things to positive things? Now, please don't get me wrong, church. All of these things are not wrong. They just ain't complete. <laughs> so when I say change your minds, I'm not talking about changing minds the way we normally think of it. I'm talking about changing mindsets. See, whether we like it or not, <laughs> or if we'll admit it, everybody's mind have been set. Some of us have, have minds that have been set subconsciously. See, we got to know that we didn't just inherit different ways we act, the way we look. We didn't just inherit moods from our families. But we all inherited certain mindsets. And some of those mindsets are good. And they help us. And they improve our lives. But these other mindsets that are not helping us, and they ain't blessing us. Mm. But this is the awesome thing about God, church. Whatever we may have got handed down from a generation of a natural family has got the opportunity to be fixed in a spiritual family. My Lord, I hope you shouted on that one. Whatever we may not have gotten from an earthly father, we can give from a heavenly father. My history does not determine my destiny. Who I have been does not dictate who I can become because God has a way of completely transforming, completely changing, and completely restructuring who we can be. My Lord, an unstable, mouthy Peter can become a rock. A scared Gideon can become a military leader. A stuttering Moses can become the greatest prophet to ever live. And whatever you have been, God can use, transform, and restore. But we've got to accept and admit that we have inherited some mindsets that have got to be changed. Hmm. hmm. Now some of them mindsets come from family. Hmm. But some of them mindsets came from pain. Because pain has a way of shaping the way we think and the way we see some things. And it causes us to make promises and commit to things. It causes us to say some things and do some things because we are speaking or we're acting out of that pain. Am I making sense? Mm -hmm. Oh, I'll never do that again. <laughs> After the way they treated me, I'll never go back there again. After what they said about me, I'll never talk to them again. After the way they hurt me or the way I got hurt in my last relationship, I'll never trust anybody like I did then again. Mm, Uh-oh. I could go on forever, church, but I think we get the point. So when I talk about changing minds, I'm talking about changing mindsets. Meaning that if my mind is set in a way and in an area that does not line up with what I see in the Bible, then I need to change my mind. I need to free my mind. Now, Paul talks a bit about this. There's two types of mindsets. Romans chapter 8 and verse 6 says, For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. See, there's two types of mindsets. A fleshly carnal mindset or a spiritual mindset. 
So when the Bible uses the word carnal, it's not talking about people who have accepted Jesus as their Savior. It's talking about people whose minds have not been renewed. Because I can have a new heart and the same mind. Oh, that's good. Because it's possible for a person to become a Christian, be born again, and become the new creature the Bible talks about, but it'll take a lifetime for a lot of us to have our mind renewed in a way that we start thinking differently in some areas. See, that's why a lot of people who've been saved for a long time still tend to repeat the same old cycles and the same old patterns because their mind has not been transformed and renewed. It's not that they ain't saved. It's not that they don't love Jesus. It's that their minds have not been renewed in that area. They may be grown in some ways, but not in others. They may be spiritual in some ways, but carnal in others. They may be all that in this area, but be lacking in that area. Because their minds have not been renewed in that area. Am I making sense? And the reason why I need my mind free is because the Bible says that when my mind is controlled and ruled by the flesh, then the end of the day is going to be death and destruction. Which means that when I don't let my spiritual self govern my thinking, not just control my morals, but control my mind. When I do not let my spirit man rule my mind, then that is going to be destructive for my mind and it will sooner or later become destructive to my life. Let me show you what I mean. <laughs> All right. So part of this transformed mind and this, and this, this uh, spirit man, letting this spirit man control my mind means that my mind is ruled by something called faith. Hebrews 11.1 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So faith causes me not just to feel different, faith causes me to think differently. See, faith causes us to be in the middle of a pandemic, and when everybody else sees things begin to fall apart, then they start thinking about destruction and collapse and depression and despair. But a faith mindset sees a time and a place for God to show up and show off. I'm not looking for destruction and despair. I'm looking for God to show up and show off. A mind of faith says, I know somehow, some way, God is going to bring some good out of this situation. I might not see see it. I might not understand it. I might not even like what's going on now, but it is his plan and he is working it for my good. Some of you already know what I'm about to say. If it ain't good, he ain't done. Amen. God is faithful. He's faithful to his word. God will provide for his people. Philippians 4 19 says, my God shall supply all according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. There might be a drought. There might be a desert place. We might have to go through some difficult times, but my God is a provider. That's not what he does. That's who he is, and he will provide. While everybody else is talking about a drought, while everybody else is talking about a desert place, I hear the sound of an abundance of rain. So this mind that does not let my spiritual man control it, church, is very vulnerable to worry, doubt, fear, depression, and negativity. And watch this. That person may have good morals, but they won't have a good life because they won't have a good mind. You see, it's hard to be healthy, whole, and happy with a mindset that's vulnerable to all these things. Because 2 Timothy 1.7 tells us that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Now see, please don't get me wrong, church. None of our minds is perfect. None of our minds is perfect. My wife tells me that I lost mine a long time ago. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But none of our minds is perfect. 
All of us at times will have to deal with some of that. But I believe that the Bible is trying to teach us that even though at times we may have a little bit of that, that does not have to have you. Mm. Fear does not have to have you. Depression does not have to have you. Despair does not have to have you. Anxiety does not have to have you. Less than does not have to have you. And I need us all to make that confession. Whatever it is, this does not have me today. It will not have me tomorrow. And if it comes after me next week, guess what? It's going to have a fight on its hands because it ain't going to get me the end either. Please don't miss this, church. Please don't miss it. God wants us to, wants to free our minds from that because that is destruction. That's misery. That's torture. Oh, this relationship's not going to work out. That's torture. This marriage is doomed. Oh, that's torture. This child is never going to amount to anything. That's torture. We ain't ever come, going to come out from under COVID-19. That's torture. And that's a tough way to wake up every day. Please get this. A mind that's not influenced by God's truth is controlled by the enemy's lies. Mm -hmm. You ain't going to make it. That's destruction. Nobody likes you. That's destruction. Oh, this is going to be terrible. That's destruction. They're talking about you. That's destruction. Those are all lies of the devil. See, the thing is, the devil cannot tell the truth. John chapter 8 and verse 44 says, You belong to your father, the devil, and you want to carry out your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth, for there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language, for he is a liar and the father of liars. Lies. So whenever the enemy tries to tell you it's the end, that this ain't going to work out, this ain't going to make it, this is going to happen, or that's going to ask that this is a thing that's never going to happen, whenever the enemy gives you some bad news, it's time for you to give your God some good praise. Because <laughs> whatever the devil says, the exact opposite is about to happen. If he says that the door's getting ready to close, then praise your God because it's getting ready to open. If he says they don't like you, then praise your God because they love you. If he says they don't care, then praise your God because they do care. Hey, when he says it ain't going to work out, then give your God some praise because God is about to come through. He is an on-time God. The enemy plants these things in our heads through thoughts. <laughs> and God wants to free our minds. He wants to free our mindsets from that way of thinking. But the question is how? <laughs> I know God wants to do it, but how is he going to do it? Now, we find the answer in the foundational text we read at the beginning. In 2 Corinthians 10, 4, the Bible says, The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, are to demolish strongholds. Now, church, when the Bible uses the word strongholds, and whenever we think the word strongholds, a lot of times a lot of people think about different things. But so what we really need to know is what Paul was talking about when he used the word stronghold. So when Paul was using the word strongholds, he's talking about what we would call a fort. What we would call a wall that's built to keep enemies out. And that's what a stronghold is. Now see, I know this is going to ruffle some feathers. I know this is going to be controversial. I'll go ahead and precede what I'm about to say with that. I know that this is going to ruffle some religious apple carts. But that's all right. Cause you need, please hear me out because this is powerful. A stronghold is not a destructive addiction. A stronghold is not a destructive habit. See, a destructive habit or addiction is the evidence of a stronghold. 
but it's not the stronghold because the stronghold is the wall that's built up or the fortress that keeps God's truth from getting to that place in our hearts and in our minds. Are you with me? So whenever you see stronghold, think wall. Have you ever dealt with or maybe you've been there yourself in a downward spiral with negativity or depression or even an addiction? But no matter what you said or what you did, when you've been dealing with folks like that, no matter what you said or what you did, they just wouldn't receive it. Anybody ever been there? See, the unwillingness to receive a truth is evidence of a stronghold. Because that is what a stronghold is. A stronghold is not something that has a stronghold on you. It's literally a fortress that keeps truth from getting to you. Mm. See, <laughs> what's causing the reaction is the stronghold. The addiction is not the stronghold. What's causing the addiction is the stronghold. You see, that reaction is not a stronghold. What's causing the reaction is. The bad attitude is not a stronghold. What's causing it is. That feeling is not the stronghold. What's causing, the, what's causing that feeling is. My Lord, this is so powerful because too many times, church, we're going after the symptoms and not even dealing with the real issues. And I know I'm supposed to be teaching today, but I feel like preaching. I feel like having church, and I came to tell somebody today, we ain't going after the symptoms no more. We coming for the strongholds today. We coming after the roots today. We pulled and we've thrown away fruit for too long, and it's always reproduced, and it's always came back. But today, we coming after the root. Today, we going after the strongholds, and today, the strongholds have got to fall. Paul says, when you're trying to pull down a stronghold, when you're trying to pull down a mindset, we cannot do it without spiritual weapons. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. So for us to break those kind of mindsets, it takes more than just psychology. It takes more than just positive thinking. It takes more than bumper sticker faith. For well, those who might be wondering, what's bumper sticker faith? We see these good sayings on bumper stickers and we try to instill them, but we don't have the mindset behind it. God is my pilot. Is he really? See, bumper sticker faith. If you're going to tear down a stronghold, you've got to have spiritual weapons. Now watch this. Paul tells us what he means when he says strongholds in verse 5. 2 Corinthians 10 and 5, we demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. So now you got to picture the scene. Here comes the knowledge of God trying to get in, but there's something arguing against it. There's a wall that's keeping the, the truth from getting in. There's a stronghold that's keeping the truth to get in. Do we see that? So truth is trying to come in. Oh, God will make a way, but something's arguing. God will make a way, but the sickness is still there. The bills keep coming. That kid's still acting that way. That family problem's still there. See, there's a stronghold that's fighting against the truth that's trying to get in so truth can't get to our hearts and to our minds and shift our mindset and shift our moves and shift our emotions because here comes the stronghold. It's being built. I hope we can catch this, church, because then truth can't get through because the stronghold Stronghold is arguing with the truth that's trying to get into your life. So let's say we're talking about forgiveness. And somebody won't receive that truth because they're fighting against that truth. The evidence of a stronghold. But if you look back in that person's past, a lot of times we can see where they inherited the mindset from a person or they inherited it from some pain. Something happened in their life where they developed a mindset where they thought that forgiveness is dangerous, that forgiveness is weakness, and it makes them vulnerable so they don't forgive anymore. So it's arguing against the knowledge of God. That's the stronghold. Please catch this. Please catch 
this. Paul says spiritual weapons tear down those strongholds. And when those strongholds are knocked down, then we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. If it doesn't line up with the word, it's got to be pulled down. Am I making sense? So here we go. <laughs> Brother John, what are some spiritual weapons that I can use to tear down strongholds? I want to be positive, but I find myself being negative. I want to be full of faith, but I find myself wrestling with doubt. I think all of us can testify and say, we've all been there. I want to enter into his rest. I want my mind to rest, but I'm fighting some worry. I think we've all been there. So what are some spiritual weapons that I can use to help me tear down these strongholds? So you ready? All right, here we go. Number one, if I'm going to destroy strongholds, I've got to start, first of all, by filtering what goes into my mind. I've got to filter what goes into my mind. If I know my mind has been set in a negative way in a certain area, then I cannot keep feeding my mind things that strengthen the negativity. i got to filter it. Because when you're trying to shift something, it will require a strategy. You can't just make shifts with strength. You've got to make shifts with strategy. And if I'm going to shift my mindset, then it means I will have to be very strategic about what, uh-oh, and who, uh-oh, I'm allowing to enter into my mind and into my heart. <clears throat> oh, let me let that one sink in for a second. Because I've got to be very careful about who I allow and what I allow to enter into my mind and into my heart. And see, what that may mean is that I've got to filter some things. In other words, I've got to filter out certain voices and certain people in my life for a certain season. Mm. And I know it might sound kind of hard, and it may sound kind of radical, but the fact is it's not hard, it's healthy. It's not, it's not radical, it's being a good steward of what God has given you, of your gifts, your talents. It's using what God has given you to the best of your ability. See, that ain't bad, it's biblical. Mm. Mm. That ain't bad, it's biblical. Now we need to see this <laughs> because the children of Israel... Watch this. Before the children of Israel walked around Jericho, one of the first things that Joshua said to them, one of the commands he gave to them when they started walking around before they could march around seven times, he said, hey now, y'all check this out. Before we walk around this wall, nobody needs to say anything until I tell you to shout. Everybody with me? Everybody remember that story, right? Everybody got it. Joshua said, nobody says anything until I tell you to shout. <laughs> See, what we fail to remember a lot of times when we read that story is because when they had the chance to go into the promised land the first time in Numbers 13, <laughs> it was the people's negativity and doubt <laughs> that talked them out of faith and into fear. Oh, these giants in there, we can't beat them. Oh, it's a great land, but there's no way we can take it because there's too much to overcome. You hear the doubt. You hear the negativity. And that's what got them from a place of faith to a place of fear, which prevented them from entering into the promised land. And their fear won out over their faith. And Joshua learned from that experience, and he let his past be a school and not a prison. And he learned from that past experience. Too many times... We allow our past to be a prison and we let it determine our future. But God is wanting us to use our past as a school so we can learn from it so we don't repeat past mistakes. Mm. 
My Lord, I wish we had a church full. I believe y'all be y'all be as excited as I am. Mm. So Joshua said, "We got to filter these voices. We can't allow the things that feed my negativity to stay in there. You see, we did this before, and we didn't reach the place where God wanted us to reach. Mm. I've seen ministries fail." I've seen people fall. I've seen a lot of different things happen simply because they listen to the wrong voices. And if we're ever going to be all that God wants us to be, then we've got to filter some of the negativity. And that may mean that some of us need to steward what God has given us by not letting our talents and gifts sit on the sidelines simply because we're listening to the wrong voices. And the wall that we're facing, please get this church, will not come down until we filter the negativity or whatever it is that's building the wall. Because if we don't, then we're feeding that mindset and whatever we feed gets stronger, and whatever we starve gets weaker. We got to filter whatever goes into our minds. All right, number two. We got to fight. We got to fight what's already in your mind. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord, we got to be transparent, church. We got to be honest. I heard it put this way. Y'all know what I think about birds. I can't stop a bird from flying around my porch. But I can stop him from building a nest. Mmm. Right. Mmm. See, if we're honest, then they some thoughts that's already in our mind. Then we got to fight against them. And this is what Paul was saying when he says we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. Now some might be thinking, man, that's hard. You mean every negative thought? Because, see, here's the thing. It's because we're retraining our minds. Because if we're honest in a lot of areas, our minds will automatically default to that old mindset or that old way of thinking. We got to be willing to go through a season of us being uncomfortable until the new normal becomes normal. Does that make sense? Because, see, some of us can testify. Now, maybe I'm the only one, and if I am, then I just need y'all to pray for your weaker brother. All right? But some of us can testify that there's some things that I used to do, and there's some things I used to say. There are some ways I used to talk. And there's some ways I used to act that just became normal to me. So I had to go through a season where it wasn't comfortable. And there were some things that were not easy. But I had to retrain my mind to think and act differently and talk differently than it used to. In other words, our default attitude and our default way of doing things and our default way of talking used to be this. But now i got to change that. And in order for that to happen, I've got to be intentional. I've got to be focused on what I do and in who I hang around with and in what I say. In other words, in order for me to see the mindset change from where I was, I've got to do that to get to where I want to be. And at first it might feel kind of weird. It might seem different. But that's why the Bible says we got to capture it. Because we have allowed it to go free for so long that that old way of thinking has become our normal. But we've got to bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. No, I'm not going to think about that. No, I'm not going to do that. No, I'm not going to hang out with them. No, I'm not going to go there. All right, number one, filter what goes into your mind. Number two, fight what's already in your mind. Finally, number three. Focus your mind. Focus your mind. I 
Isaiah chapter 26 and verse 3 says, That will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusted in thee. If I will keep my mind focused on God, then God will keep my mind in perfect peace. So I have got to focus. And focus means making the decision of what you won't look at and making the decision about what you will look at. Mm. I'm not looking at this so I can look at this. See, when Peter stood up out the boat, he made a decision. I'm not going to listen to the other 11. Some of you have heard me say this before, but I know that I know what some of you might be thinking. Well, the Bible don't say the 11 said anything. Well, obviously, you've never been on a boat with a group of guys. I'm going to be honest with you. I've been out on lakes before with guys fishing, and if one of us stood up to jump out the boat and walk on the water, the rest of them would have said, man, are you crazy? So I know they was, they was 11 other voices saying, what are you doing? You are crazy. You're going to drown. But Peter made a decision. I'm not going to listen to these other voices that's going on around me. I'm going to focus on Jesus. So when he stepped out the boat, he lost his focus and he began to sink. See, he didn't lose the word he was given. He didn't lose the promise he was given. He didn't lose the call that he got. He lost his focus on the one who gave the promise. So it's one thing to filter negative things, but it's another to focus on the right thing. Mm, does that make sense? Yeah. So number one, we said, was to filter negative things, but now number three is to focus on the right things. We've got to be filling ourselves with faith. See, that's why this morning is so important. That's why church is so important. That's why connecting to a body of believers is so important. That's why Christian friends are important. That's why it is so important for us to focus in, our, in the word, in our prayer life. It's so important so we can focus to help us maintain our commitment. See, the devil's after your commitment because that's the key that unlocks the door to your next level. See, God will promote the committed, and we've got to stay in his presence. In this time we're living in, it's hard to maintain our level of commitment, but it's not a time to be spiritually weak. We've got to be strong, and to be strong, it requires us to have focus. And I believe that's what God is going to do for us. God wants our minds to be free. <laughs> so he wants us to free our minds. We've got to have our minds free, church. Mm, 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 mm. We cannot overlook the importance of a freed mind. I believe that's why God led us in this direction today. Because in this time that our country is going through, in this time some of us are going through personally, and in this time that we're going through corporately, we cannot lose our focus or our commitment level. We've got to have our minds free. Church, I hope you received something today. If you did, just type amen in the chat. Just say amen. <laughs> Church, I want to pray for you. We appreciate you all coming in today, but I want to pray for you. Praise the Lord. Father, right now we pray for our minds. Lord, for the entire New Day family, whether they are part of our physical New Day family, our online New Day family, or even if they just casually stumbled across this video, Lord, we pray for our minds. Lord, we know that this is going to require us to have a plan and not just use our strength. Lord, we know we need spiritual weapons. 
Lord, we pray you would free our minds from a fleshly mindset. And you would set our minds on what you would have us to focus on. Lord, that we would set our minds on things that you would have us to dwell on and on things you'd want us to think on. Today, Lord, help us all to recognize strongholds that might exist in our lives. Lord, help us to tear them down through the truth of your word. Today, we're, not, we're, we're going after the true issues, Lord. We're not just going after the symptoms. Lord, we're tired of just throwing away fruit and it just repeating itself. Lord, but we want to go after the root. We want to go after the, the, the very essence of why these things are there. Today, we tear down the real strongholds in our lives and in our minds. Lord, help us to see them so we can tear them down. Expose these strongholds to us, Lord, so we know what we're fighting against and we can tear down the true issues. Lord, we pray for that person who's watching and who realizes they need their mind free. Lord, we pray that you give them strength, you give them courage, and you give them wisdom to do what needs to be done in order to gain this freedom in you that only comes from you, Lord. Because where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty, and who the Son has set free is free indeed. So today, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for your freedom that's coming to each and every heart and each and every life. Lord, we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you, church. We love you and we appreciate you. Make plans now to join us this Wednesday night for the prayer service. Special prayer service at 7 p.m. this Wednesday night. Please keep updated on our Facebook page. We will definitely keep you updated with the announcements and things going on. Uh, but church, right now we are planning on being here Wednesday night, 7 p.m. We look forward to seeing you then. God bless you.